Now you might be surprised to hear me of all people say this, but the student debt debate at the Supreme Court right now is, well, it's incredibly simple. Check the runtime on this video, it's a shorty. Now to summarize it all in a sentence, back in 2001, Congress handed the executive branch a blank check. Now some 22 years later, the president's written a number in. But it's a really big number. Too big a number? Maybe. What's the right size number? Don't know. Should there be any limit to the numerical size? I mean, at the end of the day, Congress did hand the executive branch a blank check. Now with that Sparknote version out of the way, let's dive into some of the meat of this debate, starting with the democratic argument. You see, they point to the HEROES Act, which gives the Secretary of Education certain powers to waive or modify student debt obligations in response to a national emergency. Now, this was back in the good old days of the early 2000s, when bills were a solid five pages long, as opposed to nowadays when they're half a rainforest long. Now, at that time, we were really shooting from the hip regarding limitations for the powers that Congress was handing over to the executive branch. So you read through this small thing and the powers, they're pretty broad. Specifically, this law says, in no uncertain terms, that the secretary is not required to exercise the waiver or modification authority under this section on a case by case basis. So basically, if you're the president's lawyer, you got a pretty decent argument. I mean, Congress specifically said that you could bulk edit individual student debt pieces in a national emergency. Uh, that's exactly what they did. Now, there were two limitations to that power. First, the president needs to declare a national emergency. Definitely check that one off. Trump did that, and then Biden just kept that gravy train rolling. Second, it can only apply to people in the military service or directly affected by the emergency that was declared. Now, you might think this is a bit of a stretch at this point, but the Trump administration used this exact law and logic to pause all student debt payments at the start of the pandemic. And no one on the conservative side in general is making that argument in today's filings. So you might think it's weird, but seems like everyone's sort of accepted it at this point. So this leaves us in this awkward spot where everyone in the White House sort of looked at this kind of old law from 2003 and said, you can do this, right? I mean, I'm reading through it and it, it doesn't say we can't. So this brings us to the conservative argument. Well, you're seriously about to cancel half a trillion dollars in federal assets? That's a lot of money. In fact, that's too much money. Now this brings us to the conservative legal doctrine called the major questions doctrine. Basically, these congressional permission slips have to come with at least some constitutional limitations to them. We got to maintain some sort of separation of power. For example, from a more progressive perspective, just imagine if Congress passed a law saying that the president can go to war in any country that contains ISIS or Al Qaeda elements without any sort of official declaration of war from Congress. Well, that would seriously negate the importance of a congressional vote to declare war, and instead sort of de facto shift that power over to the executive branch. That would probably violate some sort of separations of power. Or, another hypothetical here, imagine if Trump were to declare an emergency at the southern border and then use that emergency to divert Pentagon funds into funding wall construction after Congress had explicitly refused to fund wall construction. Well, after that definitely hypothetical hypothetical, Pelosi said that that action opened the door for presidents to do an end run around Congress. And at the time it might have been sketchy, but declaring an emergency to redistribute funds against Congress's wishes was technically legal under the rules that Congress had set out. So after that got challenged at the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court voted along ideological lines to overturn lower court's rulings and keep that funding in place. So this brings us to today's argument, where both of the sides have played the UNO reverse card. And now conservatives are saying, whoa, whoa, you 
can't use emergency declarations to divert federal funds in a way that Congress didn't intend. I mean, Congress explicitly voted against including $10,000 in student debt relief when they were crafting their 2020 emergency bill. Now, despite all this being technically legal, we now think it violates the separation of powers. And you also have progressives who are now arguing, well, we checked all the boxes in this case, and if it's technically legal, that's good enough for us. Now, what makes summarizing the conservative argument so challenging today is, there isn't exactly some sort of test or qualifying feature for when something becomes a major question. It's more, eh, you'll know it when you see it. Half a trillion dollars? That's a pretty big number. Eight billion for wall funding? Well, that's a smaller number. When does it become a major question? That's a major question. We'll figure it out and answer it maybe today. Now there are a lot of questions revolving around this case, with some people still even thinking there's a chance it could all get dismissed out on standing alone. If you want to hear a summary of that standing debate, or an explanation as to why the United States government can cancel specifically student debt and not other kinds of debt, well there's going to be links to videos explaining both of those in the outro. Still, before I get to the outro, I feel like I owe a quick apology to my regular viewers. Sorry it took me so long to begin writing this stuff again, but it's been a long few months with my day job, and surprisingly enough, this channel still falls under the life side of my work-life balance. Now I'm trying to get back into the flow of things, and really, thank you for your patience and waiting for me to put out another video. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the, well, generally overlooked, but in this case not so much, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.